Animals. Abby. Ghost. Shadow. I love animals. I am not an animal activist or a tree hugger. I just love animals. And I don't kill them. I'm a cat person, and so is my wife. As my wife and I were about to commence our great adventure together, it seems fate had determined that we were to begin this experience with the company of a feline friend. Ramona and I were married on the Las Vegas Strip. It was Saturday, August 4th, 1990, at about 1.15 on a very hot summer morning. We had just gotten off the air, I had, from doing my radio program at KWN. Ramona's parents came to Las Vegas, and we had a beautiful wedding at a chapel on the Strip. If you've ever been on the Las Vegas Strip, you know it's not much different than a very busy highway with a lot of traffic all around the clock. The chances of a little kitten surviving are slim and none at best. Nevertheless, this little black waif of a kitten, scraggly fur sticking out everywhere, appeared just as we were having our wedding ceremony. Somebody opened the door, and it walked right in. Well, as far as I'm concerned, it was a miracle. I immediately knew that cat was our cat. When I saw it, I said, that's our cat. Abby started off skinny and was practically starving to death when he first came into our lives. But the moment we had our, actually, it was our wedding meal. It was roast beef, and I think it perverted him. I gave him a whole plate of it, and he ate that entire plate of roast beef. I've never seen a cat eat that much roast beef, and it gave him a taste for it. Well, Abby is now the flabby tabby, about 17 pounds in weight. This poor cat hates fish, loves beef. Abby's been in our company and has selfishly had us all to himself. He demands and gets attention whenever he wants it. That's how cats are. I said, when he wants it. My cat story, though, does not end there. One day, Abby was behaving kind of oddly. He began running around the house, going into closets, going into every nook and cranny, just running around like a nut. Ramona and I knew something was up. Well, apparently we had a kitten under the house, hiding behind cinder blocks. We kept calling it kitty, 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 but it wouldn't come out. See, we had holes in the cinder blocks, and somehow this cat, being so small, managed to get in there and wouldn't come out. Well, I tried everything to get this cat out from under the house, including attempting to lure it out with various meats, fish, smoked port chatham tuna. <laughs> if we left the food out, we discovered that it would be gone overnight. In other words, ghost would come out, and that's how it got its name, ghost, uh, and eat during the dark hours when we couldn't see it. Well, a little thing crawled out from hiding, ate, disappeared. Thought of what pathetic, sad little life this little animal had. On the other hand, it was lucky to have found our place to live because otherwise poor thing would have been coyote meat quickly. After about two weeks of trying to get this poor little cat out, it became more and more imperative that I capture this little thing for her own good. By now, I was calling the little waif ghost because you could never see it. The next part of the odyssey involved catching the little stray under our house, so I devised a trap. But it did not work. There's a box with a stick, you know, and I would wait for hours by the window, and finally, one day, this cat got under the box, and I pulled the string, and the cat's tail got caught in the box, and it backed out, and it got away. Anyway, each day that passed, I was going nuttier, getting frustrated, even more determined to catch this little cat. I put on protective clothing, a pair of gloves, and took a flashlight with me. I then went under the house. After much effort, crawling around under the house, bumping my head several times, uh, becoming entangled with spider webs, I eventually stopped in my tracks <laughs> because there was a supporting crossbeam that ran the, the length of our house. And I could see, with a flashlight, at the other end of the house, there was Ghost, all curled up, watching me. I thought I was going to lose my mind. Well, each night on my radio program, I'd give my listeners an update, mostly out of sheer frustration and possibly with the hope somebody might offer a solution. This went on for several more days, and eventually I received a call from a listener 
A lady who worked for the Los Angeles SPCA, the Animal Control Department, who had my solution. She sent me a special cat trap called a Have a Heart Trap. This is an ingenious trap made of metal mesh, and the cat walks into the trap, and when the cat steps on a metal plate at the bottom, which you cover with newspaper or something, the trap automatically shuts, and there you've got your cat. Well, I set to have a heart trap and waited for two days. First, I used science diet as bait, and then finally some smoked pork chatham tuna. That did the trick. Much to my delight, surprise, and relief, Ghost got trapped. The next day, we took Ghost to the vet for a checkup and to get shots and so forth. Well, we received a call from the vet who told us that Ghost was dying from feline leukemia, fatal cat disease for which there is no cure. She would die quickly and in great pain. We were also told that Ghost had an injury to her hip which the vet assumed was the result of the kitten being thrown from a moving car. I was devastated. Actually, I cried. So did my wife. We felt so sorry for this little ghost. As an act of mercy, we had the vet put ghost down. Not an easy decision, folks. That night, I called Alan Corbett, president of the broadcast company, The Network, explained to him what happened, told him I didn't think I could go on the air that evening. Being a cat man, he was sympathetic, simply said, Art, you do what you feel is best. After getting off the phone, I gave it some very serious thought. And you know, I had told the audience all about ghosts, so I decided I'd go to the local animal shelter. And I'd look for cats. Try to find a cat. My wife joined me. And we ended up spending most of the afternoon at the animal shelter looking at dozens of cats. We eventually found another kitten who we would learn was healthy, and so we named our new cat Shadow, the Shadow of Ghost, because Shadow followed Ghost. Shadow is now a part of our family. Uh, by the way, I found Shadow uh, in the very last uh, cattery that we went into, and Shadow ran up, jumped up on me, and hugged me put her little paws around my neck, and hugged me. And so there was no question about it. Shadow was the cat. Anyhow, I went on the air that night and did so with a very heavy heart. I mourned Ghost's passing, but decided to tell my listeners a story and said, if you've got a couple of bucks you can rub together, send them to the Pahrump Valley Animal Shelter, and please don't tell them I asked you to do it. Much to the surprise of the animal shelter people and myself, the money came pouring in. Thousands of dollars were raised. Last count, over $8,000. About a dollar or two at a time. The lady who ran the shelter found out, of course, that I had encouraged people to do it. She called me on the phone and, well, actually, she was astounded at the uh, response. And I told her the story of Ghost. With the money being raised, they are now erecting a new cat shelter as a matter of fact, it's almost done. It will carry a plaque with the name of Ghost. Abby and Shadow get along very well. Though it's funny to see that little Shadow is very domineering and tends to boss Abby around. It's actually a little embarrassing. It's good to know that I brought Shadow into a better life. For my wife and I, that poor little pathetic waif of a kitten ghost is going to linger in our memories forever. I have to put the whole thing into perspective in this way. At least we found Ghost, and she didn't die miserably. Ironically enough, her life amounted to good for other cats in the future.